So you have lots of access databases you need to keep track of, and you want an administrative database to help you do it. In part one of our series on administrative databases, we created a teeny tiny form that shows you how many users are logged in to each database you want to track. In part two today, we're going to add to that form a section on the right which will show you the details of who is logged into each database that you might click on the left side. That's coming up next. Hey everybody, this is Ray Harvey with Access Jitsu. Thanks for joining us for part two of our series on Access Administrative Databases. In part one of this series, we built a fairly simple administrative form that just showed you the number of users logged in to each Access database that you want to track. Today we're going to add to that form a section to the right that shows you the details of each person that's logged in to the databases you're, you're tracking. But a quick note before we take a look at that, I'm not going to go over the specifics of the forms and the code that we built in part one. What I want to do is just cover the new stuff that we're adding today in this video. So if you need the specifics on part one, I'll have a link to part one in the description below the video. So let's head on over to our form and design view. In part one, our form basically consisted of this subform on the left. It shows us a list of the databases we're tracking and the number of users logged into each one. Today we've added a little bit of a message up here at the top telling the user what to expect on how this form works and we've added a second subform over here on the right. Now this new form queries the same table that the original subform queried except it shows more detail. So instead of showing one row per database with a count of users in this subform, this subform Let's pull this up and actually have it running. When I click on a database over here on the left, I want to see the users on the right side adjust themselves. And the way we do that is we have this parent form acting as a container to hold some variables we're going to pass back and forth between the subforms. When you click on a data sheet row over here, we're going to load a form level variable, a parent form level variable that this subform is then going to use in its query and head over to our code. All right, subform DB list. This subform is this subform over here on the left. And we have added two new events. Text database name click and text users click. And that is this field and this field. Let's put the form back in display form view for just a second. So these are the two only two controls that we're showing in the user interface. So anywhere they click on the row, we can capture with those two events. So we have a variable defined with public scope in our parent form. We're going to populate that with the value in this text DBID control, which is over here, right there. And that is a control that we are hiding from the user interface. The, the users don't need to see it, but we are going to use it here in our code. After we've populated that form level variable, then we're going to call a method in our parent form, which is essentially going to tell the other subform to refresh itself. So let's take a look at our parent form. That is this guy right here. So the new code that we've added, here is our public scope variable that is going to be used to pass our database ID back and forth between subforms. On our form load and our form timer events, we already had this call jet load jet users method. That's the method that queries each database we're monitoring to get the number of users and details about each user and loads those into our users logged in table. The new method we have here is show DB user list and that is this guy right here. And all that's doing is telling our new subform to run this method, load user detail. And we're going to pass it the value of the database ID we want it to look at. So the other new code we have is in our load jet users method. And this is the method that queries the other databases to get the details of the users logged in to each one. So coming on down here, we have gotten ourselves a record set that contains each database we want to monitor. We have opened a connection to them. We have queried the jet user roster for each one. We have a record set containing the users in, in each one of those databases. That we then loop through it and insert those users into our users logged in table over here. I want to note, I want to draw attention to something here. In part one, I had this if statement right here 
which kept the monitoring machine, and in, in this case would be my machine right here we're running on, keeping it out of the user's list, commented out that if now so that my machine will be in the user's list. And I did that so that we can have a slightly more interesting set of users up here. You know, that, that way I can get, I only have one laptop. Okay, so I've got my laptop logged into this database and this database, then I'm showing myself monitoring machine logged in to all three. That way we can see the, the user interface here and see it flip back and forth. That's the only reason I'm doing that for this video. So after we have loaded those into our users logged in table, the new code we have is right down here in this if. And what I'm wanting to, and what I'm doing down here is testing to see if this code is running for the very first time at form load or if it's running as a refresh. We have the form timer running every 10 seconds. So every 10 seconds, I've got the form refreshing itself, checking for new users in each database. So at form.load, this db for user detail, this form of a variable, it will have it will be initialized to the value of zero. And if that's the case, we, if we know we're at form load and nothing has happened yet, we haven't been in this form yet until just now, what I want to do is I want to select the first database in the list. So we're going to we're going to say, or for our subform db list, record set move first. That will select that first data sheet row in that left form, and then I want to load the database ID into our form of a variable, db for user detail. And then I'm going to call that show db user list, which is the method that's going to tell the other subform, the detail subform, to refresh itself. Now, if we're not at form load, db user for detail will not be zero, but will have some database ID in it. And we'll go down to this else, and what I want to do then is find that database in that subform on the left. See what happened. What has happened here is we have refreshed that record set in that left subform. We want to find that database ID in that record set. So subform db list dot record set dot find first db ID equals the value that was in our db for user detail variable, our form of a variable. And after that, then I'm going to call again our show db user list. And yes, for those of you who are looking at code efficiency and and uh, shorter code. This is in both parts of my if, so yes, it would be really cool to put it down here instead of in both places, right? Because no matter what, we're going to call this db show db user list. So why am I doing this? Why do I care about um, finding the database ID that was selected? If I were a user and I were using this form, here we go, and I had selected the second row, the second database in this list, and if the database had refresh itself, watch for the red flash down here, there we go. Without that code, at that refresh, this row would no longer be selected and the form would automatically put itself back up here on the first record. If I were a user, that would infuriate me, especially if you had a longer list of databases here that maybe scrolled off the bottom and I were down here on the bottom on you know, a database 15 or 20 and every 10 seconds it popped me back up to the top row, I'd be super pissed. So. What we want to do is keep track of which row we were on, and after the refresh, put the interface back on that same row. So that's what I'm doing there. So back over to our code, the last piece of new code we have is our new form itself, the subform user list. This is the subform on the right side of our form. And this is the method that's being called from our parent form when we call show db user list. We're calling load user detail and we're giving it the primary key of the database ID we want it to query. So that's this guy right here. Load user detail, and there's our DB ID coming in as our parameter. And all we have in here is we're building an, an SQL string that we're going to make the record source for our form. And it's really just selecting all the columns from our users logged in table where connected equals true, like the others were, and the DB ID equals the DBID that's passed in. So that's it for part two of this series. I'll put a link to part one in the description below the video. I'll also put a link to the code list in this video down below. So thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of this. Please don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.